Today's guest on Crystal Storytellers Podcast is performer, philanthropist, award-winning actress, singer, director, and producer, Michelle Lee. I tell you, she touched my heart. Gittle Mosca is so much a part of me because she is, she's a person who gives love and gives love Mm -hmm. and gives love a little bit more and won't take it back. This is not me today, but it was then where uh, I just had to make everybody so comfortable and I was insecure in that I had to be the best of me plus. Get ready to set sail with Michelle Lee as she shares fascinating personal stories with Crystal Symphony's cruise director as they sail from Tokyo to San Francisco. Discovered at the age of 16, Miss Lee began her career on Broadway, and within a year, she was starring in the musical Bravo Giovanni. Her role as Rosemary, opposite Robert Morse in the original How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, earned her national acclaim. And then she worked alongside Dick Van Dyke in the comic, and again with Dean Jones in The Love Bug. In 1979, her career took an amazing turn with her Emmy-nominated role as Karen McKenzie Fairgate in that landmark CBS series, Knott's Landing, which ran for 14 seasons and is one of the longest-running dramatic series in American television history. Miss Lee appeared in every episode, setting a record of consecutive appearances, playing the same lead character in all 344 episodes. In 1996, Miss Lee became the first woman to produce, direct, co-write, and star in a film for television. Color Me Perfect made its debut as an event presentation on the Lifetime Network. Across decades of her multifaceted career, Miss Lee has performed with true legends in the industry, including Bob Hope, Carol Burnett, Dick Van Dyke, and Fred Astaire. Her memorable leading roles in theater and film have been an inspiration to so many fans. Michelle Lee joins us on this film and theater theme cruise aboard the Crystal Symphony. Hi, I'm Russ Thomas Grieve, the cruise director on board the Crystal Symphony, and I am so excited to be sitting here with Michelle Lee, especially after listening to her speak about her career on Broadway television and in film while on board the Crystal Symphony. Michelle Lee, welcome to the Crystal Storytellers podcast, and thank you for sailing with us on board the 22-night sailing from Tokyo to San Francisco. Oh my goodness, I've had, I cannot tell you the fun I've had, and a lot of it, I know this sounds like I'm I don't know. I won't, I won't fill in the words, but the people on board uh-huh. are so sweet. I mean, so interesting. And I, I, everything about this has been so wonderful, especially number one, the food. Uh, <laughs> you can't go wrong with the food on Crystal, right? No, you're number one. <laughs> uh, you know, the guests on board the Crystal Symphony yes. and the Serenity are fabulous people. Yeah. This is your first time on Crystal. Am I correct in that? No. <laughs> Oh, it is not. I this am is my third, but I've been a regular person. <laughs> now I'm not a regular person. Okay, so you've sailed was before a, as a guest. Yes. Okay. I adore. The, I've never been on the Serenity. Okay. But, oh, Crystal, you can't That's get great, better. Yeah. No, you, well, I'm not schmoozing. No, I know. Uh, this is the best ever. Well, don't you, get better than this. And also, you're very cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Michelle Lee. That, that, I, I'm blushing. They, they can't see that yes, over, the, you uh, are. over the radio waves you're here. You're purple. But, oh, my gosh. <laughs> who I am. Uh, but I, I must say, I have been a fan for years. And uh, it goes back to the Seesaw days uh, back oh, in the yeah. uh, in the 70s when you starred as, uh, I believe, Gettle Mosca? Yes, Gettle Mosca. Uh, okay. Seesaw was an adaptation of... Uh, Two for the Seesaw, which was a Broadway play, straight Broadway play with Anne Bancroft and Henry Fonda, I think. Was it? Whoa. Then it was made a movie, and it was Shirley MacLaine. And then I did it, and I tell you, she touched my heart. Gittle Mosca is so much a part of me because she is, she's a person who gives love and gives love. Mm -hmm. And gives love a little bit more and can't take it and won't take it back. This is not me today, but it was then where uh, I just had to make everybody so comfortable. And you no, know, it's true. You're looking at me like, oh, oh God, it can't possibly be me. But it was. It was. Um, I was insecure in that I had to be the best of me plus. And now I'm just a... Bitch. (laughs) (laughs) 
I guess we can say that on air. I think you can. I think you can. Yeah. Well, that's a lot to take on to be a star in a Broadway show at such a young age. Yeah, you know, I, seriously, I was so young. And before that, I did The Love Bug and what was the other way? How to Succeed in Business. Right. And they both played the Grauman's Chinese and Radio City Music Hall. This is all before I was 30. Give me a break. That's a lot. Well, you started at 16. Yeah, I did. I started singing at 16. I'm a performer. Uh -huh. That's what Michelle Lee, my middle name, Lee, is. Michelle Lee Dusick it was my, my maiden name. And it's not really a maiden name, is it? But let's go on. That was you, the name you were given at birth. Yes. Yes. And so I became Michelle Lee by chopping off the Dusick <laughs> because they didn't do that in those days. In those days, you wouldn't have strange last names. Now we do whatever, you know, there's four or five names. <laughs> That's true. Per person. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, there was, you know, when I did, the first thing I did was called Vintage 60 and my father, because at 16, I was singing with a, with a society orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they would take me to bar mitzvahs and weddings and whatever. Um, and my father said, okay, if you want this, you be, you know, you're going to be kicked in the, you know what, by everybody, you open a door and they're going to close it in your face and you better learn to take rejection. So he told my mother to take me to uh, an audition at the Ivar Theater, which is in Hollywood, and audition for this uh, show. Uh, and so I, I went in there and I, you know, when you're young, you have absolutely no fear. You're not paying the bills. You don't <laughs> care. The credit card doesn't mean anything. So I got up on stage, planted my feet firmly apart, looked out there, and I sang, you make me feel so young. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that was uh, Frank Sinatra's uh, song. Then, you know, he was doing it. I did One and a Half Choruses with a tag. Mm -hmm. And the producer stood up, applauded. I went, oh, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And my father, you know, he could not believe. He could not believe. This was my first job. And it was a smash hit in Hollywood. Every major star would be in that audience. Judy Garland, Sammy Davis Jr. Everybody was in that audience every single day. David Merrick, the great producer, Broadway producers, came to see it, brought it to Broadway where it lasted eight nights. Did I say that? Yes, eight <laughs> nights. But, but it was the first show I ever did. And you know what happens when you do something and it's easy to start with? You get used to, oh, this is a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. And then later you realize, oh, I am now paying the bills. <laughs> and you get a little nervous about yeah. those auditions. It's very interesting. So tell me, do you still get nervous when they say action on, uh, you know, on television or when you walk on the stage before you sing at a charity event or whatever it is? Do you still get those butterflies? You know, on television, no, because, you know, they could go cut. Oh, Michelle, that was awful. Do it again. Right. <laughs> Michelle, that was the worst thing I ever saw you do. I don't believe one thing you're saying. Cut. Do it again. It's easy. Sure. Okay. Then when you get to the stage, yeah. For me now, uh, I guess always there is that butterfly. No mm -hmm. question about it. And I think it's good. It's that energy you get before you go on. Uh, yeah, you know, ugh, amazing. I would walk outside. I have to tell you this because people on board here have been saying this to me. I would walk outside of the theater and people would be waiting for my autograph, Mary, mm -hmm. Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> I go, no, 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 no. I'm Michelle Lee. We wore our hair. The flip, the flip was right. in. But anyway, no, I've had a great time with my career. I could not want for anything more. That's great. Let's go back, because I know your dad, he was a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think that he was an inspiration to put you into the business? No. 
No. No, I I loved music from the time I was in a in the crib. My mom said I was singing in the crib, crib before I could talk, making those sounds, you know, music sounds. And um, actually, if you see me today standing anywhere on this ship and I'm supposed to be standing still, and I'm not kidding, and all of you out there who are listening to me right now, watch me while I'm standing, not when I'm singing. I sway. I always have music in my head. Always. So I, and they used to make fun of me on knots landing. I would turn around, they'd all be swaying back and forth, imitating me. But no, it, no I'm serious. It was a part of me. And then, um, gosh, it, my mom, this is the song she taught me. Down in the meadow, in it, da, 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 da. three little fishies and a mama fishy too. Swim, said the mama fishy, swim if you can. And they swam and swam all over the dam. Dim, dam, bit of bottom, water, um, choo. Bim, bam, down in the water, um, choo. Bim, dam, down in the water, um, choo. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. Brilliant. And you don't know it. Right, because I, you're too young, no, you S.O. <laughs> you S.O. You know, okay, here's one we might know together. Mary Dotsy 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 and Little Lambsy, right? Yeah, that's way too low for me, but <laughs> oh, sorry. my voice has Mary been getting... Dotsy. Yeah, no, that's a great song. My mom taught me that, too. And, um, oh, keep... I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know that one. Stand upon your feet. I don't know that one. Take right. these eggs and beat. I don't remember it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. But then I took my my parents put me into, uh, oh gosh, what it was called, um, the school where you have to wear a book on your head and walk across um, or Charm school. Charm school. You know, a lot of kids out there can benefit from it. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm serious. Etiquette and charm. I'm so charming. You'll see me all over the ship being charming. You are charming. And then I did tap dancing. Oh, yes. Okay. When I was a kid, I was a Meglin kitty. Nobody knows what the H I'm talking about, but I was. So I had this music thing. My father wrote music, mm -hmm. my makeup artist father. As a matter of fact, Jimmy Durante sang one of his songs. But it's, you know, we just have it in our family. We've got this thing going on. Showbiz family. Yeah, music family. Music family. Um, you worked with a lot of greats. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And I know Fred Astaire is one of your favorites that you worked with. Am I correct in that? Yes, but I was also afraid of him. I acted as if I wasn't. But it was Fred Astaire. How, how what an icon. I mean, everybody. You. I mean, it's Mr. A stare, and I, um, I got to know him a little bit, not a lot, but he took me to lunch one day, and we were talking about everything and anything, and I, I asked him about some of the movies he had done, and he told me he never, ever watches himself in a movie, ever. He doesn't want to, and I know some other people like that. It's strange, and Carol Burnett, who's the nicest person ever, and Frank Sinatra, who, never mind, I won't tell you that story. <laughs> <laughs> That's another podcast. <laughs> That's another podcast. Come to, oh. um, anyway, you know, talking about celebrity, I have to tell you, during the Knott's Landing days, oh, you know, I used to, my head, I mean, this is awful, but if people are watching, but they're whispering, and I feel them knowing who I am, but not having the ability to come up and say, oh, Michelle Lee, thank you, I really like your show, then I'm fine. But if whispering or if I'm in uh, an elevator and I feel somebody looking in my ear, <laughs> I don't want no looking, stinking looking in my ear. So I'll tell you a funny thing during that time, talking about celebrity, mm -hmm. my son, who was very, very young, uh, my kid kid, and uh, we were at uh, the airport flying to New York or L.A. And I see Paul Newman across the room. And he's walking in my direction. 
and I say, oh, God, oh, 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 David, Paul Newman's walking, oh, Paul Newman, oh, Paul Newman, he said, Mom, are you crazy? You're much more important than he is. <laughs> that's what mom said? Yeah. I love that's, it. No, my son, David. Oh, cool. It was like, and it's true. You know, it's it's generational. And Absolutely. this was, of course, not slanding. But I remember asking or talking about Clark Gable or someone or Cary Grant one day. And this person said, who? Who? I said, you know, Cary Grant. Not oh. a clue. And that says something to all of us on board. Absolutely. You know, you're here and you're not in many different ways. So we have to enjoy cruises and smiles and hugging each other and knowing we're the luckiest people in the world. There you go. Well, that'd be a great way to end the podcast, but we're not ready to end yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Thought I was giving it to you. Cut yeah, no, and move. No, I got a few other questions that okay. I have to ask you. <laughs> I want to get in a little bit into Knott's Landing because okay. that was a big part of your life. 79 oh, yeah. to 8, 93, was 93. it? 93. And you did all 344 episodes, yes. I believe. Yes. Not to brag, but I was the only actor who did every single. That's incredible. So you've got to have some stories with, you know, um, Joan Van Ark or uh, some of the other great. You know, I never talk. Board. Yes, I haven't been talking about everybody, but I forgot to say in my last two interviews that Julie Harris was on our our show for maybe nine years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Julie Harris, who I've loved forever, well before this. In fact. We had the same agent at one time, so I really saw her often. Now, Julie Harris was the first female to get into the Yale Drama School. Mm. The first female. Wow. Guess what? Joan Van Ark from Knott's Landing was the second female to get into Yale Drama School. What a coincidence. It's not. They're both brilliantly talented. Right. Oh, my gosh. But both ended up on the same show. And they both ended up on the same yeah, show. That's interesting. You know, you asked me the other day about Knott's Landing, um, that it was a, it was an offshoot of uh, Dallas, but it wasn't. Um, it was Dallas was written after Knott's Landing, and they put Dallas on first. They didn't know they were going to put on Knott's Landing, meaning CBS. Um, but it was a time, it was Reaganism, the, the me generation, mm -hmm. money, you know, dynasty, all that. So they put on Dallas. And of course, it became with the wonderful mix of people, Cain and Abel, you get the two brothers, right? Right. It's just the perfect story. It's, it's Shakespearean. So you've got that show going like a bat out of H. And so they decided... Okay, we'll put on that show you wrote before about the cul-de-sac. And they took Gary Ewing, who was Ted Shackelford, mm -hmm. and Joan Van Ark, who was a Ewing, married to him. And they put them on the pilot of Knott's Landing. And it was them moving into the cul-de-sac. So they were able to say, this is from Dallas. Oh. So it's really interesting, that thing. But we had, you know, I mean, so many of us came from the stage, and I, I have to remember more people. Gosh. Oh, wait. Ava Gardner she was won. on, not for long, but she played Bill Devane's mother. And I actually, in looking through a lot of the things to put together my video for this cruise, I saw a scene that I was engaged with Ava Gardner in a conversation and I think oh my goodness all the things that I could have done in my life and I didn't remember that but I bet Davis oh my god she was on that slide no oh, oh I, oh, I <laughs> lied I lied and Cary Grant and yeah. uh, Paul Newman and uh, I'm lying <laughs> uh, no, so uh, Alec Baldwin. I was say, young Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin yeah. was on the show for ooh, a while, maybe 
three, four years. Mm -hmm. And he played Julie Harris's long lost son. Oh. And you know, you knew he was going to be a star immediately. The first time I worked with him, there's just that something. something yes, and he was, uh, you know, you. I think he was just off a, a, some movie, a, a miniseries or something. But, okay. yeah, and you know what? He keeps up with us all Does the time. He? Yes. Oh, and nice. especially two of my friends who were in the crew. This is how nice he is. I mean, he'll call them. How you doing? Yeah. That's great. Really. You still keep up with your two husbands? I mean, you mean in real TV, life? Yeah, or? Your TV husbands. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sid and Mac, I think their names were yes. on television. Yes, okay. Sid and Mac. Sid was... Don uh, Murray? Don Murray, exactly. And Don Murray, of course, they everybody lauded this man. He was, he was a giant. And uh, they called him Mr. Murray on the set. I didn't call him anything because I was embarrassed. How do I call my husband Mr. Murray? Uh, but when he would do a scene, people would stop and they'd watch the scene. He's one of the guys that just, it just rolls off his yeah. whatever, his whatever. And I loved, we were wonderful together, I will say. One of the reasons Knott's Landing was such a hit, I believe, it wasn't the soap opera drama until very late yeah. in the, the uh, series. But this was a show that was sometimes very poignant and always a little humor. So people love that. So you got all that into these wonderful marriages that I have with Don Murray and then with uh, Kevin Dobson. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Dobson, it's the same thing. He has a fabulous sense of humor. And we I just saw him maybe two months ago. And I love him. This man wants a director on the set, put his uh, hands on my shoulder from behind and he moved me he was getting frustrated I guess I must have been being a bad girl <laughs> I can't ever imagine and he, that. oh no <laughs> so he moved me about two feet and Kevin Dobson lost it I'm not kidding oh. he went up to this director and he looked into his face and he said don't you ever touch her or anyone again or you're going to have to pay for it yeah, he st he stood up for me, and he was like that. He he was such a wonderful gentleman, like a husband would should be. Oh, we yes. yes. I think I said this the other day. I swear, as we're getting older, years. <laughs> wait, we would kind of fight, but not really. You know about how to do a scene or whatever, or what are you doing here or there? But we loved each other, so it would be like That's we great. were husband and wife. That's One great. day, as we got ten years mm -hmm. older. We're doing a love scene, <laughs> and we're standing face to face about three inches from each other, and they were setting up something on the set, and he looked at me, and he said, can you see me? And I said, no, can you see me? No, we were laughing because since you're losing your eyesight, and some of you out there might know, you know, you start to blur, you everything goes awry. Right, as we both sit here wearing glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want one more question about uh, Nussle, and then I'm going to move on to one other quick thing here, and that is, you had a very famous monologue about you being a Pollyanna. On oh, I Nussle. wish I had it. Yes, and I remember that, and it was uh, very poignant. So, do you want to talk about that for just a second? Because of maybe your character as Karen made, made yes, and feel well. That? I'll tell you. Uh, no, it was it was society at the time. Uh -huh. This was called the Pollyanna speech, mm -hmm. and the wonderful thing about Knott's Landing at the time was we really did keep up with what was going on right. in our society at that time. And this was a time, and it was the first time we were aware that people were stealing or there were some uh, stealing through the mail or and people started putting locks on their doors and you know, they would lock their home and they would lock their car. Before that, no, my aunt Ethel used to come over to my house in real life open the back door, walk in and say, lemon meringue pie, anyone want it? Okay, this was another time. And my 
my character and Joan Van Ark's character, Val, during all the years before this, would open each other's back door on the show and just come on, just come in. Karen, are you here? I'm in the kitchen. We had to stop doing that. And there was a time, and, and this Pollyanna speech at that time, that our, the writer creator of the show, David Jacobs, wrote what is called the Pollyanna speech. And it was the first time we voiced what was going on in America at that time, which is, she says, she wants to be a Pollyanna. Someone was accusing her of being a Pollyanna. And the Pollyanna speech, which I don't remember right now, uh, is, I have it in my room. That's later. Anyway, okay. uh, it, the, she says, I don't want to have to worry about my child on the front lawn. I don't want to worry about sending money in the mail. I don't want to have to lock my car and lock my house Yes, I am a Pollyanna. I want to be a Pollyanna. That was the essence of that scene. We just had a moment of acting there by uh, <laughs> Michelle Lee. I got to say, I was so entrenched in what how you were doing that. Oh, that yes. Can I do another take? Yeah. No, that was perfect. <laughs> I would say it was all right there. You don't need another take. Uh, a role that got away from you. Oh, Gypsy. Okay, I never auditioned for Gypsy, but when I saw Gypsy on Broadway, which was my first Broadway show with my mom sitting in the third row, uh, stage left. <laughs> see, I remember exactly where I am. Right. And I see Ethel Merman. Okay. Mm. And the show was so powerful, so wonderful, it made an impression on me again, uh, as so many. Broadway shows do. And so I always thought, I'm going to get this role and I can identify with it. So many things about me today, you know, as we try to take care of our children. Who is it for? Is it for our children or is it for us, our pride, our honor, our stardom, our X and Y and Z? And so, you know, then this actor did it and then this actor did it. And I was in Knott's Landing 14 years. You know, I would sign up for X amount of time. Um, and then, of course, Tyne Daly did it. And then that just blew me away. They did ask me to do it. When they were out of town with Tyne Daly, uh, they called me because Tyne Daly at first was having a lot of trouble with her voice. When you're not used to doing Broadway, you could be in big trouble. Even taking breaths during a sentence, a dialogue, because if you have a character that's going as fast as Michelle Lee is going right now, where the hell do you breathe? <laughs> so anyway, I, I I really wanted to do it, but alas, no. But you were just on the boards in a show called Wicked. You played Madame Morble. <laughs> yes. And uh, so what was it like to be back on Broadway after, when was the last time you'd been on Broadway prior to that? Oh, 53 years before. No, I'm See, lying. I was like, you're not that old. Oh, yeah. No, I hadn't been in since, uh, I did Tale of the Allergist Wife. That's right, in 2000. And that, yeah. And, um, and you were nominated for a Tony Award for that. Yes, yes, I was. That was nice. Thank God. Yeah, a couple of them along the way. Yes. Um, so... Uh, oh, so Wicked. About, yeah. Okay. So they had asked me to do Wicked before, but not on Broadway, and I always turned it down. Then they said, okay, Broadway, and of course, to be on the boards in New York City, come on. Mm -hmm. you, then you don't do better. So I said, okay. Now, this character, many of you obviously have seen Wicked, because I think now it's in the 14th year. It's like Knott's Land, going on forever. And... Um, you don't know who this character is at first. And I really played her as an innocent, totally as an innocent, until the turn and you realize who she really is. She's horrible, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had so much fun with, oh, I know all the secrets kids come up to me today on board. I'll tell you some of the secrets, how she flies and how she sings while flying, you know, at the end. Right. I could not e attempt that song. These kids are so incredible. They have a range from 
Defying Gravity is the song. I Defying Gravity, yeah. absolutely. And I know I stood back there and I saw the mechanism and how they make her fly. It is so awesome, and everything else, the the monkeys flying and ah, just great. Sometimes when kids would come with their parents, I would take them backstage and I'd show them some of this stuff. It was amazing. My makeup was more amazing. I wish I had it to show you. I do have it on. <laughs> I have it on my phone. You didn't get to see it the other day. You just saw a, what you thought was a pretty marble. Okay. If you got up close and you saw what I have on my face, oh my goodness, it would scare you. Did you do your makeup every night or did you have an artist who did it? The own? artist did it a couple of nights and actually drew me, um, you know, your eyes are uh, B40. Bingo! Your <laughs> your nose is whatever. Your, and did a whole thing and mapped it a out. Plot. And then a, a plot. And after that, I did my own makeup. And I got it down to about a half hour. It's it was very long to do. Right. And then, of course, a few different wigs that weighed a ton. Uh, clothes, kids... Kids, women out there, you would not believe the clothes. When you see it, it's one thing uh, in the theater. But when you're there and you feel it and look at the colors, and the, it's magnificent. And, of course, every X amount of time, there's a, a new Madame Marble. Another actor takes the role. And what they have done is they keep some of the costumes that were made specifically for that particular actress. Right. So they, in essence, I guess, save a lot of money on these very expensive clothes. A lot of time in the, in the theater, uh, an actor or replacement actor is always usually cast according to the convenience of the costume. Yeah, right. A lot of times, right. having done that, I know, <laughs> having been a replacement actor. But just a couple of really quick fire questions for you, all right? And then we'll, we'll let you go. Michelle has her tongue out. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite book or, or a movie that's currently out? Oh, my gosh. That's too difficult. Okay. Uh, everything that has to do with, um, well, Mueller I'm not up to, but all the the books about Trump and and Miss, <laughs> and Mrs. Obama. <laughs> Amazing book. It is. Amazing book. Okay. Uh, strangest food you've ever eaten? Oh, gosh. I've never tried... Snails and I think escargot, escargot are snails, but the most let's see. I thought octopus was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> calamari, you're not a calamari. Oh, man. no, I love calamari. okay, okay. <laughs> uh, Beatles or Rolling Stones? Oh, Beatles, Beatles, coffee or tea? Coffee and today or tomorrow? Today. today, this is today. I played that role at the Hollywood Bowl. Yes, Maine. Maine. You'd be a fabulous Maine. I know, and I, I can was. I also see you be Vera as well. I think you know you'd be what? such a funny Vera. Yeah. Have you ever played her on stage, though? At the Hollywood Bowl, I know, but have you ever done a run of Maine? Mm, no. No, because I think to descend from that staircase singing oh. is today. Oh, yes. What a fabulous Amazing. Moment. And leaving, going up the stairs with young... Patrick. Pat young Patrick. Yeah. Played by Ben... Platt. Ben Platt, who, dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. And uh, by the way, oh God, I help you folks out there understand what I'm saying. Uh, he's a major Broadway actor, okay? And he played my Patrick. And I loved him as a kid. He had talent. Mm -hmm. You knew he was going to be something. Anyway, <laughs> when I saw uh, his show on Broadway, I went backstage to see him. And I started to cry. And he was so sweet to me, hugging me. And, oh, because when you see the little ones, it's like your kid. Right. Growing up to be this powerful, wonderful artist. Oh. So it's like you passed the torch in a way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't pass oh, well. it so fast. <laughs> You're still holding on to I'm, it a little bit. <laughs> I am squeezing the handle like you wouldn't believe. Don't even think it. Oh, my gosh. So who would not want to hug you, Michelle Lee? I'm, I'm going to wrap up here because... Uh, President Trump. <laughs> well, I must say, you have been a joy 
and a breath of fresh air for uh, us here aboard the Crystal Symphony. You've been so giving and loving, and I think everyone here has just really, truly enjoyed your presence. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the wonderful moments that you've given me and all of us on film and on stage. And I hope that you never stop. I really do. I just think that you are just a love, and it's been a dream come true for me to be able to have you here on board and to be able to spend a half an hour with you here. So. Oh, that is very, very nice. I'd like you to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay me to keep going. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, just thank you so much. I loved every minute of it. Uh, good, good. And we we'll look forward to having you back. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. And thank you at home for listening in. And stay tuned because we have many more great interviews coming up. And uh, as I always say, eat, drink, and be happy. Until next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Crystal Storytellers. If you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. For more information about upcoming Crystal sailings, please visit www.crystalcruises.com. See you next week when we are joined by former military fighter and test pilot, engineer, retired astronaut, former commander of the International Space Station, and retired U.S. Navy Captain Scott Kelly.